Hi, it's me again, and what is going on with the BBC and the royal family? Have the BBC forgotten that there's a royal charter in place that keeps the BBC licence fee there, keeps us paying it? Stop pissing off the boss, BBC. It's crazy, isn't it? It seems to be a bit of a war between them. And they've got this story today. Let's take a look at this. Disrespectful. BBC flooded with complaints over William and Harry documentary. Prince William and Prince Harry's relationship with the media was laid bare by the new BBC documentary, The Princess and the Press. The two-parter examined the relationship between the brothers and the media. However, the BBC faced more than 150 complaints from viewers who claimed the documentary was disrespectful to the royal family. Well, without wishing to keep mentioning it, the BBC does have a bit of a history with disrespecting the royal family with a certain news reporter in 1995, wasn't it? Many of the complaints said the programme should not have been aired. The BBC publishes such responses when it receives more than 100 complaints about a show. In a statement, the BBC defended the documentary and said, The Princess and the Press explored the relationship between the media and the monarchy, focusing on the younger royals. It included interviews with a range of print and broadcast reporters who follow the royals closely, none of which drove a white Fiat Uno. Press and the royal family, I don't get on, do I? The documentary was hosted by Amal Rajan, who has also faced backlash after making a grovelling apology for rude and immature comments made about the royal family. Oh, they picked a winner to present that then, didn't they? Someone presenting a documentary about the royal family who's made rude and immature comments about the royal family. Brilliant. You can't make it up, can you? What planet does the BBC executives live on? I want to go and stay there, I tell you. Madness. In an open letter to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge after they announced they were expecting their first child in December 2012, Mr Rajan called on the couple to renounce the luxuries of royal patronage and aristocracy as he described their public role as a total fraud. So Mr Rajan's obviously not a royalist, somewhat like myself, I'm not a big royalist, but if you've got a documentary about the royal family and you're in business due to a royal charter, probably best to put a royalist in the helm, eh? In another column on the Diamond Jubilee in January 2012, Mr Rajan accused the Duke of Edinburgh of being a racist buffoon and described Prince Charles as scientifically illiterate. <laughs> Let's have him present a documentary about the royal family, shall we? See what crazy crap he comes out with today. <laughs> I mean, not off the mark, in my humble opinion, some of it, but uh, yeah, it would be your first pick if you producing a documentary about the royal family, would he? He tweeted, I want to say I deeply regret it. Yeah, it's because you wanted the gig presenting the royal family thing. I wrote things that were rude and immature, and I look back on them now with real embarrassment and ask myself, what was I thinking, frankly? That's the BBC all over, isn't it? Looking back and seeing you did something wrong and saying, what were we thinking? Oh, let's do it again. That's the BBC all over. A BBC spokesman said, this article predates Amol's work at the BBC. Once journalists joined the BBC, they leave past views at the door. No, just because you've joined a company doesn't mean you're not who you are or don't think how you still think. You just don't open your trap so much about it at the office. But you're still who you are. You're not going to change just because you're working for a different company. You just say different things while you're at work. But you can still keep your anti-royalist views for, you know, the pub. Can't you? you change who you are just because you work for the BBC. Who the BBC think they're so special, don't they? Amol is an experienced BBC journalist who reports on all the topics he covers in an impartial way and in line with the BBC's editorial guidelines. You can't stop people thinking and feeling how they feel. And even if they're acting impartial when they're at work, the thoughts are still there and they might leak out. Now, if you want to do a royal documentary and you want it to be a bit positive, you put somebody who's a proven royalist at the helm. You don't put someone who's got a history of slagging off the royals at the helm. It makes no sense, does it? I mean, it doesn't bother me. I don't watch anything on the BBC and I'm not a big royalist. But it just it beggars belief sometimes, doesn't it? Who puts people in charge of stuff at the BBC? It's like they just don't think things through, isn't it? So what do you think about this? Do you think I'm right and they should have put a royalist in? Or do you think it's quite funny that a bloke with such anti-royal feelings got the job presenting a documentary about the royal family? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.